speak to him mouth to mouth. So because prophets speak God's word, they speak a creative force. Because we were ignorant, we didn't really understood what grace was. It depends on the individual, the way you look at it, the way you handle yourself, the way you carry yourself. They want to know what disease in the family, what does the family do, they want to know all these things about the background of the family so that they won't get themselves because they know that those things have influence. God created man. The man that God created fell. You see, he fell. And because he fell, he was subject to corruption, to destruction, to satanic dominion and all that. It is Monday, the 21st day of May 2018. This is the Prime News coming to you from our studios here at Asylum Down in Accra, Ghana. I am Sandra Ofusu Dewonu. Let's take a look at stories making the headlines in the next one hour. Mixed feeling among Ghanaians as former President J.D. Mahama announces a comeback. ISF Bank given approval to be renamed as GN Bank USA. Dr. And on the foreign front, experimental Ebola vaccination campaign to begin in Congo. Details of these stories and many others coming up shortly. Please stay tuned. Gaining the bulletin tonight, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Southside Chicago-based ISF Bank, Dr. Papakwesi Indum, has announced that the USA Banking Regulator, the Office of the Controller of the Currency OCC, has approved the changing of the name of the ISF Bank to become GN Bank USA. This announcement was made at the annual Customer Appreciation Gala of the bank held in Chicago on Wednesday, May 16, 2018. In 1934, 13 black men started the Illinois Service Federal Savings and Loans Association. It was black women who ran the bank and made it work. The ISF Bank, as it has come to be known, has supported many to acquire their first homes and start their own businesses. On April 29, 2016, the Indu family obtained change of control approval from the Office of the Controller of the Currency to acquire the bank. According to Dr. Indum, since then, new capital, directions, and management personnel have been added to diversify and strengthen corporate governance. Since then, the ISF Bank has become more stable, safe, ready, and able to serve the community for several more decades unlimited to come. At the Customer Appreciation Gala, where the change of name was announced, Dr. Indum mentioned some more positive changes to come. He indicated that they are determined to grow this bank to become a $1 billion strong national financial institution headquartered right there on the south side of Chicago. He noted that in July, they intend to introduce an own mobile banking wallet product called Pay Global. He also said plans are in place to work hard to convince merchants in the community, the store around the corner, Restaurants such as Peaches, Marianos, and the rest to accept payments using the product so people do not have to carry cash with them. Among others, 
He also said they decided to give the ISF Bank a boost by rebranding it. ISF Bank, soon to become GN Bank, will invest in technology, people and so ideas bountifully and at harvest time share the benefits with the bank's customers and the community. There is no American bank focusing on the African Caribbean market and it is the intention to turn the 84-year-old Chicago bank into a local and international powerhouse. So on this particular good news, we are expecting to speak to the chairman of the board of directors of the Southside Chicago-based ISF Bank in the person of Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum. As and when we get him, we will have that interaction with him. But until then, let's do some other stories. And although Ghana is a secular country with more than half of the citizenry being Christians and who make remarkable financial contributions to their churches, uh, they make quite an impact on development. Now the big question is, should churches be made to pay taxes? Speaking to a section of the public in an exclusive interview, some Ghanaians have expressed diverse views on why churches should or should not pay taxes. If you say, tax, government um, because you're not a mining, and he said, Oh, tax. Nature won't pay a mining And he was so much tax because a Okay. And tax in Currently, he is enjoying some privileges as a former president. So, he coming back, will that uh, like privileges be taken away from him first before he will like stage a comeback? Secondly, uh, he coming back to stand and uh, he loses the election. What's the way forward? Will he go and come back again? Personally, I think you should sit down and uh, let somebody else to come. One, because uh, if he comes now and he wins, he's going to go for only four years. Then the NDC has to market somebody else for the next election, which is going to affect them. So if he steps aside for someone to come this year and uh, they market the person for next four years, I'm sure the next uh, 2024, they can, the person can win. But for now, I'm not sure if he wins in the next four years, they have to market somebody else. It's going to affect them. Those are some candid opinions of a cross section of Ghanaians what they think about what former President John Dramani Mahama said in his tweet about his comeback for the 2020 uh, flag bearership position of the NDC. Let's do some other stories. And the Vice President, Dr. Alhaji Mahamudu Baumia, has urged Ghanaians to continue to rally behind the Ekufuado led administration in order to transform the country. The Vice President said this when he donated bags of rice, sugar, and an unspecified amount of, of money to the Muslim community in Somina to support Ramadan fasting and prayers. Muslims throughout the world are fasting for 30 days to seek Allah's favor of their sins and that of the nations of their origin after joining the Muslim community in Somalia to pray. President Al-Haji Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia noted that the NPP government is among the few governments around the world to be able to fulfill its promises within 16 months in office. He therefore implored Ghanaians to rally behind the government as it transforms Ghana.
other dignitaries in his entourage spoke some words of encouragement in Arabic to the Muslim community. Let's get back to some economic issues. And Ghana's economy finished 2017 on a high note, confirming Ghana's position as one of the fastest growing economies in the world. GDP surged 8.1% in annual terms in the fourth quarter, bringing full year growth to 8.5%, the fastest rate in five years. The big question is, how does this reflect in the life of the ordinary Ghanaian? GNTV took to the streets to ask Ghanaians on their financial well-being as compared to how it was then about a year ago. Some people feel the economy as it is now is more favorable, while others feel things could have been better. Making profits, but not much like the previous years. The, uh, some of them are doing susu 10 cities daily, but compared to, the, to last year, to this year, but those who are doing 10 cities daily, they do 5 cities a day. If it actually within the 5 day, within the month, he cannot finish his 30 days of susu. Then within the course of the month, he said, Alaji, I need my money. What money for? He said, I have an expenditure to do. So he can't continue the susu. That is what is happening with my customers. Expenditure, now the expenditure is more than before. Because... Before I used to, I used to give them uh, their their monthly allowance, but now the monthly allowance is too much, more than before. And you have, as you can see, this time around people don't show things because they, they used to complain about money. They don't have money. They don't have money. Somebody will bring you cloth to show for him. It will leave it. Uh, about one month, two months before we come back to take it. So if you can see the economy before now, it's not good like before. It's called the market. What to add here, baby? Now, since the local market has come out of the economy, and so she to, we must buy a charge. We must buy. We must see the boy ready. And so we are paying money. No crowd on me. Now, then I cash up. Now, me so I am making this. I'm this kind of tall line. I'm in my mood. So I light. I'm in my mood. So I say that's the name. So since the idea you must. First, no, no, yet. Cecilia, dear, and yet, why should I shop room? No money in I be brewer. Oh, the bound bed, you say, who charging or sin boy into a qua, on baby. The government of the day has done well. Uh, talking about the economy, you see, definitely in life, we have so many things talking about negative and positive. Definitely. When the negative is there, there might be a positive. So once a lot of people are sending their people, their children to school, it means the benefit that the nation will get. Uh, trust me, by the next 10 years, the illiteracy that we are in, encountering in this country will go down. In other stories, a survey on inclusive education carried out by a development consultant who is the Member of Parliament for the Krachi in Chumuru constituency, Honorable John Majisi, has revealed that students with disability benefiting from the free SHS are having challenges with learning due to lack of learning aids. He argued that the law demands all students, including persons with disability, to have equal access to education. He has therefore appealed to government to, as a matter of urgency, address the challenge. Yeah, from uh, the various comments that have come from people and from my own observation, uh, not in a serious program or provision has been made for persons with disabilities as far as this free SHS is concerned. I think the free SHS is something that I will have to commend government for bringing on board. But there are still some teething problems which we need to consider. Most especially when it comes to the engagement of persons with disabilities. Go to most of the schools that we have. The schools are not accessible. Uh, government needs to consider, you know, accessibility in terms of where the, the structures, most of the structures are sorry buildings, uh, there are no ramps in the school, there are no lifts and all that, which makes the environmental accessibility very, very difficult. Now, if you, if you look at some of the schools, 
the authorities do not have any idea about disability issues. I have personally gone to some two secondary schools in the central region where the children are not accepted in the school because the authorities think that they cannot fit in. And it's all lack of knowledge. No awareness has been created. So the issue of awareness, there must be serious awareness, engaging the parents, engaging the school authorities, engaging the students themselves as to how personal disabilities can also be part and parcel of the normal system of education. Again, I think government is, has done well by virtue of the introduction of the free SHS, even though there are problems. We are all aware of the teaching problem that we have all encountered. And now we are going to have another batch. This problem must be addressed immediately before we have the second batch, or else we are going to have more difficulties. Because if, say, about 100 students are facing a problem, now we are going to have about 200 or more. So you can you can begin to appreciate the more the challenges that are, are we are that we are going to face as a nation. So let's begin to look at not just the program, but the quality of the program. And in looking at the quality of the program, we are looking at all categories of people benefiting from it, and for that matter, persons with disabilities. So, as I've already said, there should be very serious engagement with stakeholders to look at the possibility of addressing the challenges for free SHS, and most especially for persons with disabilities. So, a call for an attention for students who have some form of a disability as they go through their free senior high school education. This is where we take a quick break. We'll be back with some more stories. Please stay. want increase in sales or do you want to draw attention then mobile advertising vans from digicart is your best bet our mobile advertising vans come with crisp digital images and visually impactful in the night and in the day reach your target audience where they live work and play contact us on 303 393 6020 or 050 132 creativity in motion. In the future, every child, man, woman, in every corner of the world will be connected. Hey. Anything that you want to know will be available at the snap of a finger. Hey. The future brings endless possibilities. But we must never forget who we are, Ghanaians. Now, who is excited about the future? Me! The future is here. Experience the all-new GN Electronics Smart TV. Experience international quality assembled right here in Ghana. For more information, contact 050-144-9465. GN Electronics. Good quality comes from home. Welcome back and it's the business segment on the Prime News with me, Sandra Ofosu Dewonu. And first in the segment, the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC of the Bank of Ghana, has reduced its key lending rate to commercial banks marginally. The central bank dropped the rate by 100 basis points to 17 percent. The rate is the lowest since November 2013. This is down by 1 percent from the previous lending rate, which stood at 18 percent. Speaking at a press conference, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, said the reduction was due to a brighter outlook for the economy. In the near term, recent changes in global financing conditions and its impact on the emerging market asset classes required some vigilance. Consequently, the committee decided to reduce the monetary policy rate by 100 basis points to 17%. According to the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, 
The committee, however, stands ready to take the appropriate policy measures to address any potential threat to the disinflation path. The business environment is generally favorable due to the relative stability of the CD, the reduction in interest rates, and the continued disinflation process. Although private sector credit remains below expectations, there are emerging signs of recovery, evidenced by increased new loan advances and easing credit conditions. It also stated that the fiscal operations indicate continued consolidation in the first quarter, although revenue concerns remain. There is a need to strengthen revenue mobilization efforts to help finance government's priority programs and increase the pace of arrears clearance to mitigate the spillover effects on the financial sector. Headline inflation trended within the medium term target of 8 plus or minus 2 percent and the forecast points to sustain this inflation over the horizon bearing unanticipated shocks. Under the circumstances, the committee noted that the rise, the risks to the inflation outlook are subdued in the forecast horizon. While global and domestic developments do not yet pose a threat to inflation, in the near term, recent changes in global financing conditions and its impact on emerging market asset classes requires some vigilance. Consequently, the committee decided to reduce the monetary policy rate by 100 basis points to 17%. The next Monetary Policy Committee MPC meeting is scheduled for July 18 to 20, 2018. The meeting will conclude on Monday, July 23, 2018 with announcement of the policy decision. In other stories, the Ghana LPG Operators Association has embarked on a nationwide strike on Monday, May 21, 2018 to protest the implementation of the cylinder recirculation model, a policy they have issues with. Consumers of LPG have shared their frustration with the new steam as the strike action is affecting their businesses. Most people seeking to fill up their gas cylinders today will not be served at any LPG retail outlet as the retailers have begun their strike to protest government decision to implement the gas cylinder recirculation model. Consumers of LPG are not able to buy gas at retail outlet as the Association of LPG Retailers embark on a nationwide strike. The operators are demanding a halt to the implementation of government cylinder recirculation policy which they say will render about 7,000 people jobless. The cylinder recirculation policy is being implemented following the gas explosion at Atomic Junction, which claimed seven lives and injured many. The plan is to stop LPG outlets from filling empty gas cylinders as part of measures to stop gas explosions. LPG bottling plants are also to be set up outside residential and commercial areas to fill cylinders for sale at retail outlets. An operator who opposed to the policy told the news team of camera that their businesses will collapse if government goes ahead to roll out the policy. Some consumers of LPG share their frustration with GNTV as a strike action is affecting them. We are pleading on our behalf so that the government should just give us some few days to talk with those managers or what, whom they are selling the gas so that they will have some sympathy for us because we the parents, for example, we are suffering because at least me, I'm having two kids. And now I have to wake up early at dawn, then go and buy charcoal to prepare something for them before they go to school. It will, it will, it hurts a lot. My gas now is this my parking. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go 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 to I'm Koko Gansa reporting for GNTV, Ghana.
Now the third Ghana CEO summit is underway in Accra. Top business executives have gathered in the capital to deliberate on leadership, innovation and investment for business and economic transformation. In his keynote address, special guest of honor, President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, challenged the private sector to exhibit innovation in good corporate governance. The third Ghana CEO Summit has commenced in Accra. This year's summit is themed leadership, innovation and investment for business and economic transformation. The summit which employs panels, plenary discussions and keynote presentations is to discuss issues that bother on economy, corporate governance, technology, innovation and investment. Keynote address will be delivered by internationally renowned keynote speakers Roger Harrop and Neville Gaunt. Top CEOs and managers will also conduct plenary sessions to this end. Addressing the summit in his opening keynote address, President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanadu Dankwe Kufu Ado, acknowledged unemployment as a threat to democracy and thus called on the private sector to play a part in creating sustainable jobs. Perhaps the greatest threat to our democracy and the stability of our nation is the problem of widespread youth unemployment. It is an issue that must be confronted head on. We must develop an economy in which sustainable jobs are created to absorb the youth that enter the job market every year. Real sustainable jobs are created by the private sector. And I urge you to partner the government and take advantage of the opportunities that are coming up. The One District, One Factor Initiative is one that has been subjected to intense preparation and provides great opportunities. While it is government that is leading this initiative, my hope is that the private sector, your sector, will rise to the occasion, identify niche areas, and establish viable industrial concerns in the districts. That is the way we can also build our own Samsung's, Kawasaki's, Suzuki's, and Hyundai. This model of one district, one factory is a necessity for our time. He further challenged the private sector to practice good corporate governance as an element for development of the Ghanaian economy. Good corporate governance must become the norm in our businesses. Corporate leaders must be able to withstand scrutiny in all aspects of their lives. Good corporate governance is absolutely essential for the healthy development of our economy. The theme of the summit also exhausts us to be innovative in the leadership of our companies. For the old ways of doing things are constantly changing, and we either embrace change and adapt or die. I urge you to lead innovation and be pioneers of change. Let's go back to our earlier story where Chairman of the Board of Directors of Southside Chicago-based ISF Bank, Dr. Papakwesi Indum, has announced that the USA Banking Regulator, the Office of the Controller of the Currency, OCC, has approved the change of name of the ISF Bank to become GN Bank USA. This announcement was made at the annual Customer Appreciation Gala of the bank held in Chicago on Wednesday, May 16, 2018. In 1934, 13 black men started the Illinois Service Federal Savings and Loans Association. It was black women who ran the bank and made it work. 
the ISF Bank, as it has come to be known, has supported many to acquire their first homes and start their own businesses. On April 29, 2016, the Indu family obtained change of control approval from the Office of the Controller of the Currency to acquire the bank. According to Dr. Indum, since then, new capital, directions and management personnel have been added to diversify and strengthen corporate governance. Since then, the ISF Bank has become more stable, safe, ready and able to serve the community for several more decades unlimited to come. At the Customer Appreciation Gala, where the change of name was announced, Dr. Indum mentioned some more positive changes to come. He indicated that they are determined to grow this bank to become a $1 billion strong national financial institution headquartered right there on the south side of Chicago. He noted that in July, they intend to introduce an own mobile banking wallet product called Pay Global. He also said plans are in place to work hard to convince merchants in the community, the store around the corner, Restaurants such as Peach African Caribbean Market, and it is the intention to turn the 84 year old Chicago bank into a local and international powerhouse. We will be telling you more about the nod for the name change for the ISF Bank. But before we do that, let's go for a quick break. Do you want increase in sales? Or do you want to draw attention? Then, mobile advertising vans from Digicart is your best bet. Our mobile advertising vans come with crisp digital images and visually impactful in the night and in the day. Reach your target audience where they live, work and play. Contact us on 0303-393-6020 or 050-132-8707. DigiCats, creativity in motion. This bulletin is live on GNTV UK and we have been joined via Google Hangout by Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Southside Chicago-based ISF Bank in the person of Dr. Papakwesi Indum to tell us more about this not for a name change. Hello, sir. Yes, hello. Thank you for joining us, Dr. A green light from the Office of the Controller of the Currency OCC, a banking regulator in the USA for a name change. It's a big deal, isn't it? Well, it's an important milestone uh, for us. Um, both ISF and GN Bank, first and foremost, ISF Bank, many people should know, uh, has been in business for 84 years. Okay. And it's been a locally based south side of Chicago bank. Now we are ready to take it national in the U.S. and international. Now for GN Bank, what this does is also it takes the GN Bank brand uh, outside of Africa because it's already multinational uh, in Africa. And the, the significance of all of this mm is that we're moving from uh, just doing local business yeah. uh, to now having the new GN Bank USA offer banking services that are sorely needed uh, to African and Caribbean markets. What does this mean for GN Bank in other parts of the world, let's say Ghana? Does it have any impact? Well, it will have a significant impact, particularly next year, when we seek the opportunity to directly link the new GN Bank USA and GN Bank 
in Ghana, Liberia, and elsewhere. When that happens, you don't have problems with correspondent banking relationships, mm. with money transfer, mm. uh, with business relationships and business promotion mm. back and forth. I'm just coming from a business meeting okay. uh, in, in the Washington area okay. where someone wants to import and sell the rice that we make in Ghana. Okay. And normally there would be banking difficulties and, and certain things here and there. Exactly. Now, the GM Bank in the U.S., GM Bank in Ghana, in the near future, this is going to be a straight transaction, mm -hmm. no difficulties whatsoever. What else does the rebranding come with? <laughs> well, what, what the rebranding uh, will do mm. is that in the U.S., uh, it, it has been a bit difficult for a, a small ISF bank, locally based, even though for 84 years, mm. uh, to be seen as a worthy competitor okay. to the Bank of, Ghana, bank of Americas of mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Chase uh, City Bank of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say GM Bank, the people in, in, in Chicago now know that it's a global brand. Yeah. A, a global brand, not just a local one, and therefore they would have the confidence that this bank will not go away. The people from the Caribbean, uh, in, in, in Chicago and in America, mm -hmm. the people from other parts of Africa, in, in the U.S., they now can see that here is a banking brand uh, that they can do business with. Doctor, how long will it take, let's say I find myself in Tennessee, Dayton, Tennessee, how long will it take for me to be able to enjoy uh, the services of GN Bank USA? Well, today, um, because of internet, um, anyone who wants to open an account, anyone from anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. not just in the US, uh, they can directly uh, apply to open an account online. Yes. Um, and, and, and be doing business uh, with ISF Bank, they can get their debit cards, they can do whatever it is that they, they need to do. We have in our business plan, mm -hmm. uh, we've made provision okay. uh, for the bank uh, to next year be, be located in the Washington, D.C., okay. uh, the Maryland, the Virginia, the New York, okay. uh, the Atlanta, okay. uh, the Wisconsin, and Massachusetts areas. So those areas we've selected um, to for us to go there uh, immediately next year. Okay. But in the Virginia area where I'm speaking from right okay. now, okay. Uh, it's our intention that next next month, next month, we will have what we call an intelligent ATM placed here, so that people can begin uh, to to connect with the bank directly. Okay. So with issues such as a uh, pay global. Uh, uh, are customers already enjoying uh, Pay Global there, or it's part of uh, the rebranding and other um, services to be benefited? Well, this this is an, actually one of the exciting new things that's going to happen. Okay. And Pay Global is, is currently operating um, in the U.S. Okay. Now we are going to link it directly. Okay to ISF Bank or the new GN Bank. Okay. And because it will be a bank providing that service, mm -hmm. um, it is going to make it widely available to anybody. Okay. And we're going to be adding a feature next month okay. so that anyone can use um, the, the, the accounts that they have with over 2,000 600 banks in the US okay. um, and load the monies from those accounts to the pay global wallet and send the money to anybody with accounts in any of those 2,600 banks in the USA. And then as a result of it, the next step would be they can load the wallets uh, with monies from any of those banks and send them to anybody anywhere in the world where we have payout points. So this is going to open up um, a huge window okay. uh, for us, uh, for for people in Africa, in the Caribbean, 
uh, to be able to do money business of any type uh, easily, conveniently, and as Pay Global says, well, uh, it is total convenience. This is is that there is nothing mm. that the others can compare. Mm. So let me be very specific. Yes. Uh, whether it's world remit, whether it's MoneyGram, okay, uh, whether it's any one of them, RIA, mm -hmm. anyone, mm -hmm. none of them has a, a direct relationship with a bank in the USA, uh, the same as, as Pay Global does. Okay. So with this linkage, with this new thing that is coming up, mm -hmm. uh, certainly Pay Global it, it gets put in a different class all by itself. Yes, it does. Dr. Ndum, I want to find out, uh, is there a target for a customer base? W what target is the bank looking at increasing its current customer base? Well, it's, it's not necessarily even a customer base. Mm -hmm. We want to turn this bank to, in the very, very near future, to become a billion dollar bank. A billion dollar That's bank. That, that is where we are headed. Once we cross that mark, uh -huh. well, nobody knows where it's going to end up. But it definitely, um, with, with a lot of the changes that are being made, uh -huh. uh, governance changes, regulatory uh, induced changes, uh -huh. business planning, and the strategies that are going on, yes. we believe that uh, this bank uh, is going to be one that many people will have to get to know and do business with. How soon are we looking at this billion dollar bank? Well, it's, it's in our business plan, um, you know, you plan, yeah. but uh, you know, your efforts have to match the plan. Yes. And, and so we're going to be working on it, okay. and, and we hope that we can achieve it uh, in the very near future. In the very near future, a billion dollar bank. Thank you, Dr. Papakwesi Indum, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Southside Chicago-based ISF Bank, soon to be renamed JN Bank USA. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. So I have been In speaking. Hello and welcome to Pay Global App. Pay Global allows you to send and receive money into your mobile wallet instantly from around the world. It makes money transfer easy, affordable, smooth and convenient for agents and users. Roaming services are also available globally. So, how to get started? First, you have to download the Pay Global app. Step 1. Open Google Play or Play Store using your Android device. Step 2. Search by typing Pay Global in the Google Play search engine. Step 3. Locate and click on Pay Global and install. Step 4. After installing, tap Open and allow access to complete the process. Now, let's see how to create a new Pay Global account. After opening the Pay Global app, click on New User Account, complete the registration form with the following information to register your account. Phone number, full name, email, date of birth, enter preferred password, and confirm your password. Click on Register Now to register your account. A confirmation code will be sent to you and displayed in the text box. Click Next to complete registration. Visit the nearest GN Momo agent to load your wallet. Contact us for support on email support at payappglobal.com. Pay Global. Total convenience. Welcome back. Let's uh, go for some weather forecast figures to be followed by some sports news.
first in the sports segment, police ladies nearly gave up the unbeaten run in their final game at home in the first round of the Fresh Park National Women's League as Lady Strikers set them a quick comeback. Two second half goals from Veronica Apia and Ruth Apia cancelled out Josephine Boating and Grace Enimes' first half goals. Let's enjoy highlights of the game. watching Prime News on GNTV here in Ghana and in the UK. My name is Abna Jamna. Now let's jump to some entertainment stories. The organizers of the Ghana Music UK in partnership with Alodia Promotions and West Coast Promotions have officially launched the third edition of the annual Ghana Meets Niger UK on Friday 18th May. The main award scheme is slated for 6th October 2018 in UK. The award scheme, which in previous years was launched in the UK, was launched in Ghana for the first time at the Plush Irata Hotel, East Lake, on last Friday. The launch was graced by Rep from Musica, CEO of National Commission on Culture, Socrates Safo, industry players, musicians, and media persons. The purpose of the award is to give the Ghanaian based artists the opportunity to showcase their works both in Ghana. UK and in Europe at large. Founder and CEO of Alodia Promotions, organizers of the Ghana Music Awards UK, Ni Oforitaki, who is the brain behind the awards scheme, detailed the process of this year's awards. For Ghana Music Award UK is April to April, so it was, let's say 2000 and se April 2017 to April 2018. <laughs> So let's jump straight into the UK where the royal wedding took place on Saturday as we have the new Duchess and Sanchez of the UK, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Prince Harry the 19th of May 2018. The couple's decision to wed on Saturday went against the tradition as royal weddings are usually taking place on a weekday. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge wed on a Friday and the Queen on Thursday. On the morning of the wedding, it was announced that the Queen has confirmed a dukedom on Prince Harry of Wales. His title will be Duke of Sachs, Earl of Dumbarton and Baron Killow. Prince Harry is thus His Royal Highness the Duke of Sachs and Meghan Markle has become Her Royal Highness, the, D the Duchess of Sachs. Here are some highlights from the match talked about 2018 royal wedding. But love is not only about a young couple. Now the power of love is demonstrated by the fact that we're all here. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. All right, so that was a wonderful wedding gone by. GNTV UK had and Ghana had its fair share of the wedding as we discussed live. That's all for entertainment news. Up next is international news with Sandra. <laughs> On the foreign front, authorities have begun distributing an experimental Ebola vaccine in Mbandaka, a major city in the Democratic Republic of Congo, on Monday, May 21, 2018, to try to stop the spread of the deadly virus. <laughs> 